at the best because you're rushing, you have a li limited time. And because of that poor quality output, the ten tendency to have poor reputation or the work imbalance. If your client, worst if your employer, cannot rely on you to complete tasks in a timely manner, their expectations and perceptions of you are adversely affected. Most likely, they will take their business elsewhere. But we can control this one with effective time management. So we can do some efforts to maximize the time that we have. When things go as per the plan, we tend to be more creative, happier, and less prone to burn out. So let us take some time to learn about time management tips and techniques. First and foremost, of course, organize yourself. Start a day earlier with a clear idea of what you need to do or what needs to be done on that day. Wake up early, make your day longer. All of us get 24 hours in a day, though it's not possible to change, but you can definitely try waking up a little earlier and make your day longer than others. Um, more at the end of the day of each workday, write out your to-do list for the next day, for the next working day. So you have the ideas of what tasks to be done on the following day. For a long term, you can utilize your calendar for more long term time, time management. You can use um, different time management apps or tools to assist you on these, such as online calendars and different applications. Write down the deadlines for tasks that are part of completing the overall project. Think about which days might be the best to dedicate the specific task. But once you have utilized your calendar, you have more time to do some personal activities such as spending your time to do exercise, to meditate, or even to pursue a hobby. Gradually, you'll able to increase your daily productivity and time management will never be a trouble. For um, completing the overall project, we all know that um, the whole is bigger than its part. So every small details of every project, if we fail to do it, the tendency it will affect the overall effectiveness or the overall, overall output of your project. Next is to set goals correctly. Set goals that are achievable and measurable and use the SMART method in settling goals. You must be specific measurable, attainable, relevant, and time-bounded. So this will give you a solid structure to your work life and prepare you for what's in store for you today. So once you set your goals, next thing to do is to prioritize wisely. Prioritize tasks based on importance and urgency. Keeping or keep mornings for most important tasks and remove non-essential or excess tasks or activities. This will help you to determine what is significant that deserves your attention and time. such as, for example, when we look at our daily tasks and we determine which are the important and urgent, we can divide it into four groups. The important and urgent, important but not urgent, urgent but not important, and lastly, not urgent and not important. For the first one, those are the tasks that we need to do right away. The next is important but not urgent, we, didn't, we need to decide when to do this task. The third is 
we can delegate the task if possible, but we must make sure that those individuals who will be giving those tasks are competent, competent enough to complete the activity. The last one, not urgent and not important, you can set aside to do it later. Fourth one is discover your zone. Discovering your flow or zone can directly contribute to the right utilization of your time. You can check if you're, you're a type of a morning person or a night person. In my case, I'm a night person. I can function well at night. Think of more um, activities that I can do. And this will also help you to reach an optimal state of mind or the consciousness when you feel and perform your best. Fifth one is to block the distractions. We must practice this one. Whenever you are working on high priority tasks, put the phone on silent mode and turning data off. You will end up saving a lot of time and take your efficiency levels at notch higher. So some of what are the some of the common yet biggest distractions that we have? We have the emails, phone calls, and social media. Yeah, number one, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, in which a task which requires only 60 minutes takes an individual for about three hours or more to be accomplished. By that, we end up wasting 759 hours each year due to the distractions and as i've said no distractions as much as possible no multitasking because we are quality over quantity focus entirely on one things and make it more effective try time boxing it refers to the act of allocating a time frame for every task did you know that the research suggests that only two percent of the population can do multitasking effectively. The rest, they are actually wasting their time and lessening the overall productivity. Next one is to set the time limit. Setting time constraints for completing tasks helps to be more focused and efficient. This is doing the small extra effort to decide on how much time you need to allot or each task can also help to recognize potential problems they arise. For example, if you know to have at least an hour to complete a task, a project A, you have task one, task two, and task three. For task one, you have to allot about 30 minutes. For task two, it's more complex. You have to allot one hour. And the task three, you have to allot another 30 minutes. For completion of a project A, you have to do it about two hours. If you have a deadline, if your boss gave it to you at 10 a.m. and you have to submit it at 11 a.m., by then you will know that it requires you two hours, but the allocated time is an hour. So by then you can easily recognize that there will be a potential problem of not dealing with the deadline. So you can easily do um, alternative, you can ask somebody to do simultaneously with the task so that you can complete it in an hour. So that's an example of setting time and also, also delegating with others. Take small breaks frequently. Again, small breaks frequently. Smart time management is not always about doing something or the other. A little breaks after an hour can also help you to take your productivity to another level. Um, during those breaks, you can inspire yourself. Instead of um, surfing the net, you can have some a little walk, have a coffee, or just looking outside. So you can refresh your mind or reboot yourself. Next is sleep at least seven to eight hours. Why? Because human mind and body make better decisions and perform more efficiently when they are well rested. Develop a schedule for your sleep and stick to it every day. 
when you have the optimum level of your um, 